This video then is going to be about the different sources of finance available to business. Because uh, when a business is new and starting up, this is probably going to be one of the first thing it's going to need to think about is where is their funding going to come from um, to get set up and get underway. And equally, when businesses grow, so even large um, PLC businesses um, are going to require sources of finance, sources of funding in order to fund their growth and expansion as well. So we're going to look at internal and external sources of finance here. So internal sources of finance are generated from within the business. And there's probably only three main ways in which that's going to happen. So the first of these would be personal savings, or you might sometimes hear that referred to as owner's capital. So that's basically as the owner of the business, you put your own money into helping to um, set up and continue running the business. Uh, the big benefit of that is going to be that you retain all of the control over your own business. So you're not selling off shares of the business to other people. And for most startups, it's probably going to be the first option. You know, how much capital, how much savings do you have to, to start trying to set up and run your business? The downside to that clearly is that not everyone has enough money to start up their own business. So that funding is likely to be limited. And then you're probably going to need to look at other sources of finance beyond that as well. Probably for more established businesses, then uh, you could look at your retained profit or sometimes called reserves. So you might look at your previous year's earnings and previous year's profit, what's left over that you could then um, reinvest into the business. Uh, the good thing about that is you don't have to pay interest on it. Um, and like with your personal savings as well, you keep control of your business. Downside would be that shareholders um, would have put money into the business and they would be expecting a dividend, a dividend, a return for that investment they've put into the business. And if you're using all of the money as retained profit and reinvesting it into the business, um, then they might be unhappy that the lack of dividends being paid to them. And finally, you might look at sale of assets, which essentially would be um, selling uh, fixed assets, machinery, um, equipment that might be used to produce output for your business. You could sell some of those, which is quite a good quick way to turn what we would call a fixed asset into something more liquid um, and, and a good kind of a shorter term form of cash. The problem with that is that you then lose the asset. Clearly, you're not then going to be able to use the asset to produce the output that it would be producing. So if you sell one of your delivery vans, you can no longer use that delivery van um, to carry out your deliveries and then um, produce revenue and profit for your business. So as internal sources of finance can be quite limited, uh, quite quickly, you might find a business looking outwardly to external sources of finance to add to their funding. So the first of these might be family and friends. So just looking for a simple loan from, from friends or family. And I would suggest that they might be more likely to lend you money than, for example, a bank. You've got kind of a, a personal connection there. And so you're more likely to be, to be able to persuade them to lend you money um, without them asking for all sorts of assurances. So that's quite a good source for startups and new businesses as well. The problem with this is just like from personal savings, your friends and family are not necessarily going to have loads and loads of money to lend to you. And also, if you fail to pay them back, particularly it could start to affect your personal relationships with them. And so you might then look towards banks and uh, borrowing from banks can come in a few different forms. So you might look to take out a bank loan, which is borrowing a set amount of money over a period of time, which you're going to repay with interest. The good thing about getting a bank loan, lots and lots of businesses use loans because you don't dilute the control and the ownership of your company. So later on, we're going to mention things to do with share capital, where you're maybe breaking up the, the ownership of your company and losing control of it. Bank loan, you don't do that. You just pay back the loan with the interest that you owe. And the downside to this is that the bank may require some form of collateral which is essentially security against the loan. So it means that um, if you fail to pay back the loan, there is something, for example, a building or some equipment or some machinery, which they could reclaim um, 
in order to take back the value of the loan that's owed to them. And this is why um, when you take out a mortgage, you're able to borrow a lot, lot more than if you were to take out a simple bank loan because your property in the case of a mortgage is being used as that collateral. Um, and another downside to loans is that you need to pay the interest back on that loan. So unlike, for example, with retained profit, where you're using your own profit from a previous year, you don't need to pay interest with a bank loan. You're going to need to pay interest over and above what you've borrowed. Um, another form of borrowing which could come from banks would be to use an overdraft, which would be an agreement to overspend the limit of your bank account um, up to a certain amount. And this is quite a flexible form of borrowing. So it's quite a good short term one. Uh, you only pay interest on what you're borrowing. So if you overspend your bank account just for a few days, then you only pay interest on that amount for those days which you overspend the bank account. Whereas if you had borrowed a loan for that whole period, um, then you'd have to pay back the loan with the interest that you owe. But in order to, to pay for that, the downside to that would be that overdrafts are usually charged at higher rates of interest. So you'd only really use them for short term borrowing. You wouldn't be likely to get an overdraft for you know, a five or 10 year period um, and use it consistently over that period because the rates of interest that you'd have to pay back would be much higher. Banks can sometimes be concerned about the level of risk involved with lending. Um, and so they might be reluctant to lend for that reason. You might struggle to persuade a bank to give you a loan. And so it's led to a rise, particularly in recent years, of something called peer to peer funding, where particularly kind of online platforms uh, match up lender to borrower. Um, and as a result of that, you kind of cut out the middleman. So the bank's going to exist there to make their own profit. Uh, whereas if you have a, a direct sort of link up between an individual or business that wants to lend money and an individual or business that wants to borrow money, there could potentially be better deals to be had for both parties there. Uh, possible downside to this might be less kind of security and regulation around that kind of industry. Um, so you might be taking on you know, a bit more risk um, than if you were dealing with uh, kind of more concrete institutions like banks. Um, you might also look to other businesses to borrow money and to raise finance. And this could come in a few different forms. So one of those would be leasing. And so leasing is when rather than purchasing a fixed asset outright, you would essentially look to rent it. So you'd rent or lease a large fixed asset like a van or a piece of equipment. Um, and that means that you don't have to front up huge amounts of money uh, straight away in order to pay for it. Good thing about this is that it can help to manage your cash flow and liquidity position, because if you're going out there and buying those large fixed assets, then that's going to cost you huge amounts of money up front, which can cause cash flow problems. But if you lease them, then you're going to spread those payments over a number of months um, and that's going to help your cash flow position. A uh, downside to that is that the asset is never actually then owned by you. So if you lease it for a really long period of time, you might actually end up paying more than if you just bought it outright in the first place. A really, really common one would be trade credit. So this is when businesses uh, basically negotiate a, a period of time where they would have their goods delivered to them and then they wouldn't pay for them straight away. So they would pay for them maybe in 30 days or 60 days time. So a really, really common arrangement between businesses. Um, and this as well can help to boost working capital. It's quite a short term source of finance and improve your liquidity. A possible downside is that all businesses really are in that same position in terms of wanting to, to improve their cash flow, boost their working capital. So if you're negotiating with your supplier and trying to delay the payment that you're making to them, well, they're going to be looking for prompt payment to make sure they can manage their working capital as well. So it's unlikely you're going to be able to negotiate too long a period before you're going to need to pay them. Business angels are wealthy entrepreneurs who provide finance or funding for a business in return for a stake in ownership of that business. And this is sometimes called venture capital investment as well. And so the big advantage of that is that these business angels can bring their expertise in different markets into the business. And also they're more willing to take risks usually than banks because they're looking for that big reward. And so they're more willing to take on board um, a bigger level of risk than lots of other lenders would be happy with. 
And the downside to that is that in return for that the lender giving you um, the money and taking on that risk, they're likely to want you to give up a big share of the business. So they might require 20%, 30%, 40% of your business in return for giving you that venture capital investment. Another possible expert external source would be crowdfunding. And so crowdfunding happens when um, as a business, you can persuade uh, large numbers of people to all contribute a small amount um, towards the, the funding of your business. Um, this is quite in innovative. It's a bit of a different method. Um, there's no need for collateral or rigid agreement. So if you can persuade people to, to give you the money, then it's quite a good way of raising finance. But the downside to that is it can be quite challenging to persuade people to part with their money because usually you're not giving up any shares in your business or anything like that. You might have to tempt them in with uh, promises of discounts or little perks um, that you could give them for your products that you might be selling down the line. Now, some businesses might turn to the government for funding in the form of government grants, uh, which would be a fantastic source of finance if you can persuade the government to give you a grant because they don't need to be re repaid at all. It's not just that the interest doesn't need to be repaid, the, the capital um, doesn't need to be repaid on grants either. But the problem with that is it, they can be quite difficult to access. So the government doesn't just go around giving grants to any business. You'd have to really justify why you would be deserving of a government grant, maybe doing something that's really beneficial for the environment or having a positive impact on the local community, for example, as well. And the final one of our external sources of finance is probably the most common source of finance, uh, particularly for public limited companies, would be to issue shares to the general public. And so they can buy a share in your company um, and you use uh, the, the money that they use to purchase that share to fund any expansion that you want to do, which is a great source of finance because there isn't the, the repayment that you would have on a loan. There isn't the interest that you would have on a loan. Uh, but the other side to that is that you're diluting down the control of your company. And also uh, those shareholders may expect a dividend, which is basically a return um, as a as a reward for them buying those shares. So you might need to pay dividends to those shareholders over time as well, even though interest would not be due.